Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and tell you whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing Gross, the first-person zombie survival mace tower defense game where you'll have to fend off endless waves of undead in order to keep yourself and your RV safe. Now the first question that I always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Gross is currently in early access and available on PC for $20. Now if you guys want to save money on games, you should check out Humble Bundle in the description below. Humble Bundle will not only help to give you a discount on games sometimes, but will also help charity and support this channel. Everything you purchase on Humble Bundle will go towards helping a charity, helping our channel, and giving you some kind of a discount if there's a discount running on that game, which they have tons of discounts that Steam does not all the time. And again, if you want to save money, just check out Humble Bundle down below by clicking the link. So what exactly is Gross? Well, Gross is an indie game that tries to mix the first person shooter, zombie, and tower defense genres all together. It then tries to make each one of those elements important to the style of gameplay you will experience throughout your time with the game. Now, upon loading into the game, you will be presented with a short tutorial to teach you the basic controls. After completing this, you will jump into your RV and continue on your journey to find safety. Along the way though, your crummy RV is going to break down and you'll need to defend it while the RV is getting fixed. This is where the main gameplay starts to come in. You'll be building barricades to create a maze as well as a variety of progressively unlocked defensive towers to help you out along the way. At the beginning, you'll be restricted to things like a small machine gun turret and some barricades, but by the end, there are well over 20 different structures that you can craft, and each one has a set purpose. This includes things like, say, a Tesla tower, slowing fans, barbed wire, flamethrowers, snipers, mortars, explosives, and much more. Your goal, of course, being to use all the tools and towers available to you in order to create the deadliest maze possible for the zombies to have to work through. This won't be easy forever, though, as the later in the game you get, the more deadly the zombies become. They not only gain more max HP, but also gain more variety. Aside from your standard zombies, you have things like sprinting zombies, Fat boys, fat princesses, swamp monsters, leprechauns, crawlers, and much more. And yes, I know I probably got a few of those names wrong, but that's just what I call them because that's what they look like. Each of these zombies will also need to be dealt with differently. For example, the leprechauns tend to be short, so some turrets just struggle to target them. But more importantly, they have a bad habit of trying to steal your money. Whereas other zombies, such as the swamp monster, tend to disable your turrets whenever they die. Both of these have to be dealt with differently, and if they're not, they can quickly end your run. Of course, with all of this stacked up against you, defending your base with towers alone just simply isn't going to be possible, and that is where you come in. The game offers a fairly wide variety of weapons, attachments, and utility items for you to choose from. Some of these items include things like snipers, shotguns, assault rifles, pistols, money grabber attachments, double jump boots, teleportation pads, and much more. Just to top it off though, every single weapon has two different ammo types available to it. These different ammo types are able to be switched mid-run and provide you with a very different benefit depending on which one you're using. For example, you could use the full metal jacket rounds, which are great for taking out neatly lined up zombies, or you could use the cryo rounds, which will freeze a target in place temporarily. In other words, you as the player are essentially the most important and most powerful tower available. Now for the pros and cons section of the video. First up for the pros is the fact that you as the player have a very significant contribution to the defense of every single round. One thing I found to be rather frustrating in other tower defense games where you're able to shoot things like say Orcs Must Die is that in the mid to later rounds, it feels like you as the player contribute very little to your success. In other words, your towers are doing all the work and you're not really doing much at all. This game goes out of its way to make sure that that you feel meaningful 
throughout your entire time within it. I mean, if you're not the most impactful one, then what's the point in you being able to even defend your base in a first person perspective anyways? Thankfully though, they did do it right by making you as the player the most impactful part of the game. Next up for the pros is the difficulty options. This game provides you with four difficulties of which you can choose to play every single level on. This makes Gross have substantial replayability value and is something many larger titles just tend to skip out on for no apparent reason, so I am super glad to see that they've added it into the game. Speaking of replayability, that brings us to our next pro, and that is the Endless Mode that you unlock after completion of the game. You play this Endless Mode on every single map in the game and on any difficulty that you want, along with a variety of different settings that you can choose from to play that endless mode on. Personally, I like to turn the tax robots off as those are something that I just don't enjoy having to deal with on endless mode, but again, there is a wide variety of options for you to change. There's also a leaderboard for the story missions on a variety of different difficulties and leaderboards of endless mode on a variety of different difficulties and maps. I can't I can't wait to see how players will interact with this, although I'm sure if the game pops off, you'll start to see some people start to figure out some kind of an exploit or some way to cheat the game, and they'll start to flood the leaderboards with inflated numbers, just like most games with leaderboards do. Nonetheless, it's a great feature to have added into the game, as it creates even more replayability value. Finally for the pros is just that the game dev cares a lot about his game and has listened to the community feedback. I mean, just before we recorded the audio for this video, we were going to talk about how Endless Mode felt like it just got too hard too fast, but the dev listened to the playtesters and drastically adjusted the speed at which Endless Mode scaled so that it doesn't get too difficult too quick. If that's not listening to the people who play your game, then I don't know what is. Now let's move over to the cons. First up for the cons is the fact that unfortunately at the time of recording this video, there is no multiplayer built into the game. This however is something that the developer has addressed and they stated they are open to adding multiplayer if the game does do well and there's enough demand for it after launch. Now our last con for today is the fact that the campaign takes only 10 hours to play through which isn't too bad, but if you're not interested in playing the game on endless mode or replaying anything on a higher difficulty, then you might be out of luck. I think a lot of the replayability value does come from that endless mode and those difficulty options available to you. Therefore, if you are only interested in picking up this game to play through the story and then you want to stop once you've beaten it, you'll have a rather short time with the game itself. Again, this doesn't mean there's no replayability or anything, it just means that if you aren't interested in endless mode and you aren't interested on trying some of the levels on higher difficulties, then there's really not going to be a whole lot for you to do. So now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that the game costs. So for this game in particular, in gross, we would want to get roughly 20 hours of enjoyment out of the $20 cost of the game. And after completing this game and putting several hours into it, we give it 7 out of 10 potatoes. Gross was an incredibly fun game that combines the idea of a first person shooter and a tower defense game into a genre that we've really not seen much of before. Now I know that a lot of our audience is in that 18 to 35 age range and if you're like me who's also in that age range and you happen to play tower defense flash games growing up like I did, then you are likely going to love the massive nostalgia trip that this game gives you. It almost feels like a very modern, high-end, top-tier flash game with love and care put into it, unlike what we tend to be seeing in many of the AAA titles today. Unfortunately though, it is still missing that multiplayer experience, but that's not going to be enough to stop it from being a fun game. And therefore, we feel that Gross is definitely worth the cost. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content just like this. We put out new videos constantly throughout the week. Thank you all so much for watching, and I want to give a big shout out to our Platinum and Above channel members, which include Jonathan S., Caustic FPV, and Jim Phillips. I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.